Okay, so I think we're probably just heading over to do the main quest now because unless we want to try to do free spirit right now. No, it's not going to happen. It's not really going to happen, but uh, tracking down the sunstone means we need to find either the pearl diver or the bard known as Even. So, okay. I think both of those things were further west, but still on Ard Skellig. Yeah, right around Arnbjorn. Actually, this one is by the lighthouse where we saw another oyster farmer dude. I'm guessing this is the oyster guy and the other one is the bard. Yeah, that's the pearl diver. This is the bard. So, I mean, if we fast travel to Arnbjorn, that's certainly the, the fastest way. We're actually not at a fast travel spot at the moment, so... Let's change that. We sold some weapons and a little bit of armor to a, well, armorer, but we might actually have some other types of stuffs that we can sell to a general salesperson. Let's give that a, a quick look here. And I'm thinking of not so much food, as much as things like pelts. Yeah, and we have, you know, a tiny bit of them here. So we'll just, we'll dump them all, I think. Or at least as many as this person can afford to take off us. And, you know, it'll add up a little bit. It's not going to be a huge game changer, but it gives us a little bit of additional inventory space as well. We sell our 19 files. Right? <laughs> There are enough of them, they actually do start to weigh a little bit. Crazy as it sounds, it's not a huge deal, but... Alright, let's go with that. Still trying to get back up to the 60,000 crown mark. Which, if we are to convert our currency, which, so you know, long. eventually, we'll end up doing. And we'll definitely make that happen. But, in pure crowns, so close. Okay. And fast travel spot is right here. So let's head on over to Arnbjorn. And the person we're looking for is. It seemed as though they were really awfully close. Did we ever go here? I don't even remember this place. Despite there being a path. I don't know. Well, there's our dude. Not now. Clearly this person is quite busy. Watching for Nilfgaard's fleet. Fleet? Oh hey, they mentioned something. Eh, no, I don't really worry about that stuff. <laughs> In my calculations, today is the day Gavorg, the legendary white whale, will swim the waters of Skellige. Oh. Been waiting for this my whole life. Oh. So this is not like a once in once a year type of thing. This is like a Haley's Comet once every 87 years or whatever it is, something like that. What's this whale about? He's to appear when specters descend from the heavens into the waves. The serpent wakes the sea's wrath and... An icy monster devours an isle. Be the first bard to compose a ballad about him. Legends don't happen to mention a curse of the Black Sun, do they? <laughs> Black Sun? What are you on about? What the heck is that? Never mind. Guy doesn't actually know what Nilfgaard is. Has no idea what we're talking about. Uh, I guess we'll watch for this whale with you? Let's watch for Gevorg together. And you can tell me what you know about any elven ruins in Skellige. And it just happens to show up the instant we start watching. Ooh, it looked like that was uh, getting pretty serious there for a second, Carol. Good thing, too. Else lies it, I plundered it long ago like all the others. Oh, there it is! Look! Say something. Oh, no, 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 what? The first one said say nothing. <laughs> I wanted to say yes. I just clicked the first one and saw that it said nothing. That was mean. I wanted to let him know. Uh, 
I totally was not paying attention. Um, Writing a historical treatise on the NHL. I was distracted. This is quite a conversation. Okay, I need to actually pay close attention to this. I never cared a whit about the elves in the mountains. I've seen three of you, Kinrider. Cut me to bits if you like. I'll never tell you about the tavern. Oh. Okay, this is not the direction I saw this going. What the heck? That was a really weird conversation. So yeah, like I said, I meant to inform that person that the whale was next to him, or, you know, right behind him, but uh, I it took me a second to realize that it was timed, and then when I saw it was timed, my first reaction was, okay, quickly, press one of the buttons before our timer runs out, because we've already lost some of that time, and then as soon as I pressed the button, I was like, wait, no, 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 the first option was don't tell him, and that was just mean. <laughs> And <laughs> they set it up like that. I feel like I've been, you know, I didn't want to do that. I feel like I've been set up to fail. But, uh, and then afterward, you know, I was thinking about that and not thinking about what these two were actually saying to each other. So I, I missed part of that conversation. And then suddenly that next response was timed. I was like, I have no idea what the context is anymore. <laughs> so I guess I'll go with one of these. And apparently he didn't like our answer. So, um, don't really know what to make of that. What, what are the long-term repercussions of what just happened? So, we talked to the bard. We don't really have any description, it seems, to describe that further. I mean, we do certainly know of what I think... Hold on. I mean, maybe that's proof that we haven't been here before. But, uh... Yeah, we... I think we know of at least one set of elven runes in Skellige that I suspect may be the place we're looking for. I'm thinking the place in northern Ard Skellig, where we had uh, those wild hunt-like ghosts that we fought a few of. They were really high level at the time. And then we were saying, no, nah, you know, this really seems like something that we are not supposed to do right now. We're supposed to come back for it on a later occasion. And then you guys were confirming, yeah, you know, Lids, don't do that right now. So, my guess is that's ultimately where we're going to end up. So, even if we don't have that bard tell us specifically, hey, this is the spot you're supposed to go, then, you know, maybe we'll end up wandering in that general direction and we'll just happen across it more organically. Um, I don't know where the... The... Benches and whetstones here. Where's the actual bench? It looks like it's this, but... Oh, no, it's over here. Okay. And... Donde esta... La otra persona? Ahí? Fail. Ooh, that was a steeper cliff than I realized. Okay, uh... Do we perhaps... Oh, this person's for significantly further away, right? Because they're out on... Yeah, we're, what? We're heading in the opposite direction. What the heck? Yeah. What? No! Why are we going here? Why is our dotted line telling us to go that way? That makes little to no sense. We need to go down here. Strange. Whoa! Okay, uh, do we want to try going down this little ravine? It's probably a really bad idea, but we're going to try it anyway, because uh, it's too late to turn back now. Entonces, vamos a continuar en esta dirección. Y vamos a ver si hay otra conversación. Oh, what? I don't think you should be hanging out here. This is probably not the safest of places. You know, there are, like, super sirens around here. I vaguely remember that we heard those people, but I couldn't actually find them when we were here previously. Which is the one that's actually trying to attack us? Presumably you. But in theory, there will be many others... Including, but not limited to you. Oh, caught me mid arc. Better timing this time? Yes. Oh, another one. Somewhere. Which one? You? 
I mean, we could do that, but that, that feels like cheating sometimes, you know? I mean, but if you're gonna hang out up there, if you're gonna just hang out and not actually come down to uh, pick our eyes out, then, you know, do we really have a choice? That's me. Okay, for a second I thought you were gonna land in the water. Whoa, speaking of landing in the water, I didn't actually want to do that. I actually wanted to, you know, loot the stuffs. Because once upon a time, it felt like we were just going to have never-ending sources of siren-based crafting materials. But then it actually turned out there were a few pieces of the Witcher gear that required some, and actually used up a, a sizable chunk of our stockpile to the point where we came relatively close to running out. So it's actually not a terrible idea to make a point of picking up a little bit more of this. But anyways, we're heading in this direction, and what I was starting to say in Spanish was that what I'd like to see that for a second there didn't look or sound like a siren. That sounded like something much bigger. Or looked like something much bigger. Like a griffin. Where where did it go? Where is this large creature of some variety? Yeah, that's definitely a griffin. What are you doing here? My guess is you're going to be pretty high level. Let's save. What is your deal? Oh, you're actually okay. technically a cockatrice? Alright, fair enough. Oh, I immediately, yes, did get greedy. I kind of just wanted to see if we could take it out before it got the chance to hit us. Which, I mean, we had a coin on, so like, did it technically hit us? I mean, yes, it did. It didn't deal damage to us, though. And what's this stuff? Are these the animals that it, that it killed? Yeah. I think so. Goat milk? Directly from the goat? Okay. You know. Not sure that's really how that works, but you're random bandits. But, uh, anyways, what I've tried to say several times here is that we should decapitate everyone that we encounter brutally. No, we're going to find this other person, and I do wonder if we're going to have a bit of a tricky conversation like we did with the previous guy. Or if it's just going to be a straightforward, hey, how's it going? By the way, we're looking for this stuff. Can you tell us anything about it? Okay, sure, here it is. Have a nice day. Maybe. But, uh, then again, based on... Based on what we saw last time around, my guess is probably not. Probably not going to be that straightforward. Okay, we make a jump for this? We sure do. Did I, you know... Get very concerned that we are not going to make that jump. Yes. Did my entire body cringe as we approach the gap? Yes. Hello? Okay. So this person is, I think, quite close now. Possibly just over on the far end of this little island. So there are more enemies here? Thought I saw a red mark for a second. Maybe not. We did have a little quest here at one point in time. Oh, we did find the little cavern over here. Talk to the pearl diver. It's a... Uh... You know, I kind of just thought it was going to be a dude who's chilling over here. Didn't think there was going to be this big circle for us to do a search and rescue in. Must be the pearl diver's boat. Is he currently diving for pearls? We're going to find him underwater? Or might we need to go into this cavern over here and find him no in there? Around it. Gonna have to dive. They call him Fishlung for a reason. Oh. Uh, yep, okay. Well... We have been down here before, I think, but let's uh, let's take the hint, and I'm assuming we we may not need to, but we probably want to throw on a killer whale here to increase our breathing capacity. There it is. Okay, let's just make sure we have it active. Now we do. Okay. 
Yeah, so I think we went in here, found some enemies, probably some loot, and fought our way through, looted that stuff, and went on our way. But didn't necessarily know if it was going to be something that was directly tied to this quest. Thought it was just going to be some random location that, you know, we happened to find extra loot in. Look, Erling, told you we wasn't done for the day. Didn't even have to fish this one out. Eh, okay, you're going to try to kill us. Don't you see he's a witcher? What's a witcher doing here? Uh, okay, so these guys were planning on basically attacking us and robbing us and potentially killing us, but now that they realize we're Witcher, maybe having some second thoughts, and so I think the first option here is basically saying like, oh, I see you've abandoned searching for pearls and perhaps taken up a bit more of a life of crime. Or the second option is more of a concern about, hey, um, what's up with the dead people? Were they not your friends? Which, in some ways, I feel like is a little bit more open for conversation. Let's try that. Never heard of Skelligers looting fallen warriors. Is that a tradition? I mean, these are your own people. You're not a voice. What do you mean, our own? These are feral scum. Went after the mm. black ones with two long ships. Fish brains. Let's see. And the body's over to their families afterward? Yeah. This is not exactly the most honorable of things to do to fellow Skelligers. Yes, they may be from a different island and by extension, likely clan, but still. Plan to return the bodies to their families at least? I mean, once you're done. They speak true. Mutants got nothing resembling refined sentiments. Look at them. You think they're ever loving mums and wifeys want to see them in this dead? The sea will bury them. And that's that. Okay, then. Sounds like you're taking quite a it's risk here. A lot. Boy, that a threat or something? Don't need to worry about me. But I heard calls underwater. Monsters must have sensed blood. Make him a little nervous. I don't hear nothing. No, you know, we have... Folk never hear these things. Yep. Till it's Super Witcher late. senses. We best get out of here, Matthias. Okay, but uh, the real reason why we're here is because we were hoping you might be able to tell us a bit more about some elven runes. Listen, heard you know a thing or two about elven runes. I just, you know, who says? Wondering. Hmm. You'll not tell him what you saw today, will you? Depends. Depends. Elven ruins, you say? What you want to know? Druid mentioned some cavern you've never been able to enter. Where is it? East of Kertrold. Yeah. Cove you can only reach from the sea. Mm, I think we've been there so done, without going through the sea, but yeah. Top. I'm done. And good idea. I think that is exactly the place where I suspected we might run into the sunstone, or at least the you know the entrance to the sunstone place. All right, hold on a second. What do these things even? Oh, yes, there are in fact enemies in here now. And actually, level 29 Drowners? Oh my goodness. That is uh, far and away the strongest Drowners we've ever fought. Okay, that was kind of silly of me. Wanted to get that on first, but crap has got a little brash there. Just barely avoided that. I'd like to igni preferably all of you. But uh, yeah, there, there are kind of too many of you right now. I dislike this. Quite aggressive. Oh, I actually could not tell, depth perception wise, how close that guy was. <laughs> kind of blended into the darkness. Is that drown dead or drowner? That dropped a red mutagen, which is definitely something we've seen from drown dead, but I didn't think we'd seen any from just normal drowners. Were they all drown dead? Maybe they were. Maybe I wasn't paying quite close enough attention. I was more. Paying attention to their level, like I said, was uh, quite a bit higher than I was expecting. Yeah, more red mutagens. But, uh, hold on a second. These things. What do they do? <laughs> We've seen this, these guys many times before. These stalagmites. And I think you can break them, but like, does anything actually happen to them? <laughs> Checked it out a few times before. 
But like... Yeah? Did they do anything? Or like... These ones? Whoa. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> when we zoomed out like that, this little rock right here <laughs> went and zoomed in right into our face like that. I thought it was a drowner that was about to maul us. And I got very startled. <laughs> oh well. No, not this time at least. No drowners to mess with us. That drowner was only in my head. We can climb on this, but like. Yeah. But I guess. That. What was that sound? Was that Geralt? Complaining about breaking an ankle? We've probably checked all this out before. That's weird. Did we already break that? I think we broke that on our way in. Now I'm just getting disoriented. Alright, let's head out. Our killer whale is expired, but this was actually a pretty minor trip underwater, so I think we're fine without it. Famous last words. Yeah, we'll activate the killer whale just in case. I mean, why not, right? I mean, this is actually quite short. Quite short of a dive. Okay, so remember that Ermian had said you should try to bring a sorceress with you when you go into this area, these elven runes, because they're going to be pretty dangerous and there's probably some kind of magical barrier. Like I said, we, I believe, have in fact gone there previously. And technically the way we were going in may have been supposed to be the way out because we were able to oh hello we were able to enter it and didn't run into any magic barriers i don't think or at least you have a spear you do have a spear hello yeah so oh there's still another question mark no okay oh there's one down there Geralt was very keen on trying to fight that guy, even though it didn't seem like he was within range. Or didn't even really see us. We'll fix you soon, don't you? I'm sorry, what was that? You're actually stronger than the other bandits. Think that's gonna be enough? There we go. Yeah, so we were able to get in there previously. No sign of magical bears. Oh, there's, hold on. There's actually stuff here that we've got to loot. Did we get to loot the bandits themselves? Maybe? What's this? Oh no, that's just animals. That uh, despite technically having corpses, you're not actually gonna let me loot. So, carrying on in that case. But yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is, I don't actually know if we're going to need to go in and access that area through the water, or if we can technically go in, you know, backwards and access it through land by going up through the mountains, which is the way that we made it happen previously. And that may be the thing, is that, you know, the exit route is sort of hidden in the mountains, and they didn't expect you to find that that spot. You aren't technically supposed to do it, but there's nothing stopping you from doing it. I don't know. We'll see. Well, apparently we're supposed to talk to Yen first, so that is perhaps the next step we'll take, and then we'll take it from there and see if uh, the game gives us more direct instruction as to how they want us to enter. So yeah, thanks to Tristan Yennefer's hard work series, Team of Defenders now had two more outstanding sorceresses in its ranks, and the prospect of gaining yet another. Is that supposed to be a, a reference to she who shall not be named? With this, our heroes were ready to face the wild hunt, but bring Aridin, but to bring Aridin to their world and cut off his escape route, they needed an elven artifact known as the Sunstone. The team set off for Skellige for the Sikhalaga Isles to finish their final task before their final battle. Yeah, so it, I mean, I vaguely remember reading that before. And yes, many finals in that description. 
does, in fact, suggest perhaps more than ever that the end is drawing close. I mean, we suspected it as soon as we started catching up with Siri that uh, we might not have much time remaining, but I think now more than ever, that is becoming a reality. And given, of course, how we've done just about all the side quests, reached a high enough level to equip just about all the equipment, that does make some sense. Obviously, we've been to... Whoa, that was quite a leap. Been to all the major areas outside of Tucson. So, that is actually, I guess, while we're on the subject, that means that I have a bit of a question for you all. That being, if we are close to finishing the base game, there are, of course, the two DLCs, the Blood and Wine and Hearts of Stone, and I fully intend to play those. The question is, when? But really, there's another Drakenid over here? I mean, we'll fight it. I'm just surprised. But yeah, so while I'm fighting this fork tail, think about when and how you'd like us to do the DLCs. Because what we could do... Oh, is it dead? It is not dead. What we could do is we could fry this fork tail. Ooh. Forktail hide? I'm actually not sure we've gotten that before. So that's cool. But yeah, so what we could do is we could, of course, immediately upon completing the base game, we could immediately go into one or both of the DLCs. I mean, I imagine that what's going to happen is basically we're going to, uh, once we do start doing a DLC, we'll basically do all of one DLC, and then we'll go and do all of the other DLC. I don't think we're going to be doing much hopping back and forth. But what that means is that we have perhaps more of an opportunity to, uh, to take a step back and plan around when and, and how we want to make that happen. So, like I said, we could go straight into both DLCs immediately after we finish the base game. We could take a little break. Um, I don't know if one of the DLCs technically makes sense to do before the other. Might just end up looking at the, the level requirements for them and see if there's one that has a lower level. Like this, which is Hearts of Stone, is 32. This, which is Blood and Wine, is 34, which suggests maybe Hearts of Stone is perhaps better to do before Blood and Wine. But I just mean to bring that up to get that conversation going a little bit because um, we're getting close now, it seems. And so it's worth at least coming up with a plan at this stage, I think. And so obviously we've been, <laughs> to take a step back, perhaps one step further, we've been playing The Witcher 3 for almost an entire year now. If you include Witcher 2 and Witcher 1, you know, going further back, because I, I played Witcher 1, then went directly into Witcher 2, then went directly into Witcher 3, I've been playing The Witcher <laughs> nonstop for over a year. So in some ways, you know, I feel like it might not be a bad idea to take a little bit of a break to recharge a bit before jumping back in with some new energy to go into Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. But uh, at the same time, I totally understand why it would also make sense to go straight into this stuff, just build off of whatever momentum we have after the, the main game to do Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. Obviously, I don't know to what extent the finishing the main game flows straight into the DLCs, or if they are really separate and it's really easy to just say, okay, you know, we can do this whenever we want to do this. There's little to no overlap between the base game and the two DLCs. So obviously that, to answer that question, does perhaps require a little bit of spoiler. So I guess I'd just say, you know, be careful with that. But um, yeah, so... Just want to start thinking about how best to to approach the DLCs because I think it's not going to be too long from now until we start having those on our radar or more than on our radar on the agenda. But anyways, let's talk to Yennefer, who is what back at Caratrolda. I imagine. Yeah. Okay. So let's fast travel. Boat 
Okay. And over here. I don't think there's really anything. Well, I mean, there are like. There's a tiny bit of stuff we picked up after fighting those drowners and fighting the bandits that we could potentially sell. So maybe it's worth doing that real quick here. But then we'll go straight over and talk to Ian. Not really sure we have anything that we need to sell to a generic merchant. I think we probably do prefer to sell to an actual blacksmith or armorer, which, come to think of it, Yes, there is one in Care Troll, though. However, it's actually not here, but it's closer to the castle, which is a little bit of a trek from here. So that is a... Uh... What the heck was that? Quite a gust of wind. Yeah, it's a little bit of a trek from here. There is, of course, this elevator that I remember not long ago I did try to go on and failed miserably. And uh, I don't remember if <laughs> if that has gone live on, on YouTube yet or not, in which case you, you may or may not have given me detailed instructions as to how to do that. But uh, isn't there... If we don't take the quote-unquote elevator, isn't there a staircase? I thought there was a staircase that's nearby. But where exactly is it? Huh? Is it all the way back there? Yeah, this this may in fact just be faster to fast travel to. Or perhaps, you know, it's this is overkill, it's not really worth it. Not entirely sure, but maybe in that case what we'll do is we'll go to the generic tradesperson here. See if we can dump anything at all to just get a little bit more weight off of us. Because although we're doing well in that regard, you know, we did pick up a little bit, but not a ton. We, the reason why I think that might be helpful to do, wow, this is level 36? What? What? Wasn't that just from a random bandit? Why did it drop such a high level weapon? 31 as well? Yeah, I actually don't know if the level of the items that drop are supposed to be based on the level of the enemies you fight, or if they're based on the level of your current character. I always thought they were the level of the enemies that you fought, so you know, if you're like a level 50 character going back to White Orchard and you fight some bandits, then you're gonna get, you know, level 3 items, so they're gonna be weak. But Maybe it's actually that, you know, if you go over to the White Orchard as a level 50 character, you'll drop weapons that are in and around level 50, in which case, that's a pretty big difference. Because, yeah, it's not like we were fighting anyone terribly strong, at least not from a bandit standpoint. So that's why I'm surprised to see there's actually some, yeah, level stuff there. But, I mean, we could sell that to this dude, but what we really want to do is sell things that are not weapons to you, and we did that recently enough that we don't have a lot. Just dump a bit, and the reason why I want to do this now is because I suspect, given how we're about to go on a bit of a voyage, perhaps, with Yen, or, you know, some dungeon diving, that, uh, eh, maybe we'll just sell the weapons Show to you as well, ways. even if they're not technically getting sold at top price, just for convenience sake. Dump these. Still selling enough. Decent amount. We're just shy of reaching the uh, the sixty thousand mark. Can we make it happen? If we sold random foods to you, we'd still be a little bit short. We'd be incredibly close, but a little bit short. So, like, if we dump our our water or our our beer. And, of course, this doesn't change our weight at all. But it does get us closer to reaching the number we're looking for here. But you don't have enough coins to get us over the 60,000 mark. But, yeah, so we'll, we get a little bit of weight taken off our back. And given how I think we're probably about to go on a pretty long journey here. Oh, okay, uh, I don't think I stepped on that fire, but apparently after that conversation, we, we were stepping on that fire. 
Yeah. So now, especially after getting rid of those weapons, we have plenty of space to go looting and dungeoneering for a while with Yen. So that's the idea there, because, you know, I think if we're in the middle of an intense dungeon, or intense cave system, whatever it may be, then it's going to be hard to sell items. Okay. So here's Siri and Yen. Let's save real quick. And what are they talking about? Okay. Sure. Greetings. Can we chat with you about anything else? Going somewhere. Siri says there's a site in Skellige we must examine. Avalok's clearly hiding something from us. Uh, yeah. Earlier, we thought we he might have been. Together, Avalok mentioned a laboratory. At okay. one point, he wished to teleport there. To retrieve something. And he refused to take me with him. It was all very strange. That is odd. Sufficiently suspicious, don't you think? That is a little bit concerning, yeah, because Avalok has definitely been secretive. However, in in general, he has tended to sort of hold Siri in a different light. He has been very nondescript, or very... He's definitely held a lot back when talking to us and talking to other, quote-unquote, normal people. And then Siri is sort of his best bud, and that he seems to tell Siri a lot of inside information and has been in many ways sort of coaching and training Siri, practicing with her abilities that come from her Elder Blood abilities. And so, um, that is that does surprise me, that he would not include Siri on such a thing. So if he's hiding something from even Siri, that is suspicious in my eyes, yes. And we've always thought that, you know, clearly, clearly he's hiding stuff. And so, some of our enemies, or at least some of our, I guess enemies is maybe a strong word, but um, some people have tried to raise that to our attention, bring that to our attention, that Avlock is not as trustworthy as you might think he is. And I think to some extent, you know, we've always acknowledged that it's just that we take the good with the bad, and that, you know, he, he has helped Siri significantly. Obviously, he was the primary person protecting her from the wild hunt while we were chasing her down, so there's something to be said for that. He certainly doesn't want her to just die instantly, so there's that that we can sort of... We can at least give him that benefit of the doubt, but is he has some big secret, at least one big secret, that he's not telling us right now, so... I mean, I, I do kind of agree with him here. So what? Wanna just sneak in and root around? Exactly. <laughs> Coming with? Fine. Where is it? On a small aisle between Undvik and Spikarog. Not exactly on mm. the way. Just found out the sunstone. We've been there. In Skellig, cavern along the coast that we can only access from the sea. Gonna need some real magic to get in, too. Go find this laboratory. I'll explore Ard Skellig. You can join me later. What? Philippa, your eyesight. Only just recovered and magically simulated. Didn't you what? say you'd need some time to get accustomed? She's getting her eyesight back? I? Oh no, Philippa. Oh, I'd forgotten how irritating she could be. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. That is uh, hard to forget. We'll await you there. So many portals. So, do we try to get some more info out of Avalok before we head out? Let's see. It sounds like we have two options here. We can either go with Yen and Siri to that laboratory and see if we can figure out what Avalok was trying to do. Or we can go with Philippa into the cave system, which I think is the place where we were a while back in Northern Ard Skellig, the place where the, uh, the fish lung dude was telling us there were some elven runes where we might find the Sunstone, and that's where we saw the wild hunt ghosts that were, like, level 34 or something like that. So, let's just see, because we got a bunch of updates 
for our our journal here. Hmm. Interesting that they are not the same level. We have the Sunstone, which is level 28. Meet Philippa and the Elven Runes. Then we have Child of the Elder Blood is new. We only just got this. This is travel to the island where Avalok's laboratory... Yeah, this is a laboratory one. You're calling it Avalok's laboratory. Okay, I... Yes, I didn't really realize that it is his laboratory. I just thought it was, or at least, you know, maybe I didn't catch the wording quite right, but I just thought it was a laboratory that Avalok happened to want to check out. Not that he owned the laboratory or anything like that. So if he does own said laboratory, then that does perhaps mean a little bit more. That could, in fact, have some pretty significant secrets in that case. But let's see. Siri pulled Geralt aside for a confidential heart-to-heart. -heart. You know, never mind the fact that Yen was there, Philippa was there. So confidential, maybe not exactly, but all right. He confided to him that Avalok had a hidden lair. Okay, yeah, no, it definitely does seem like it is his hidden location, his hideout. A secret place that not even Siri, his star pupil and longtime traveling companion, had been allowed to visit. Yeah, so that's the thing. Is Siri, if Siri is his star pupil, then if this is a place that he doesn't even want his star pupil to know about or visit, then that says a lot, I think. Intrigued, Geralt decided to enter the secret lair and find out what the seer was hiding. The most important part of any conspiracy is for the co-conspirators to trust each other fully, and Siri's revelation had cast a shadow of suspicion on Avalok. Yeah, okay. So for a second I thought that uh, that the whole co-conspirators thing was referring to uh, just us, Yen, and Siri trying to figure out what was happening with Avalok, not all of us plus Avalok, plus the other mages and everyone else who's been helping us against the Wild Hunt. But okay, so... Gerald knew light must be shed on this shadow before it proved too late. Yeah, so basically we just want to get the truth out of Avalok before we actually end up trying to fight the Wild Hunt, because otherwise we stand, or we have the risk of... Him having that nasty surprise come out, we're not prepared for it, and that might be the difference between us succeeding and failing. So, I think that's the key thing. That's the key reason why we really want to check this place out. Is obviously, you know, just curiosity to a certain extent. Like, oh, Avlock's being all secretive. He doesn't want to tell us what's happening in this location. He doesn't want us to visit it. It'd be cool to figure it out, but at the same time, like from a more practical standpoint, the reason why we want to do that is so that we understand why. It's not so much what is there, but what, or I guess what is there might be important. Doesn't, don't know what it is yet. But then that'll also answer a lot of questions as to why Avalok has been being so secretive. And that might, uh, that could certainly, uh, lead to a, a difficult conversation with Avalok after that. But, so, in terms of which one we do first, I mean, I'm hoping, of course, that it doesn't actually matter which one we do first and that you know you finish one you can go straight into the other and this isn't like a you only choose one and the other one automatically fails or something like that we've had a few quests recently that have made me question if that was going to be the case i'm thinking of the ones where we went with chris avalok siri yen zoltan roach roach had his own yeah i think right that was the one to kill radovich was that technically Siggy? But anyways, all those people, and basically they had their own specific quests uh, in which they were looking for us to help them out. And so at first I thought, oh, we might only be able to take one of them, but it did turn out that we were able to do all of them. So hoping this is like that situation, especially since they're different levels, that does suggest that, you know, perhaps you are supposed to do Sunstone first and then Child of the Other Blood, especially because he got the Sunstone previously. And uh, so this is not brand new. We've done several things on this side and just have to meet up with Philippa, whereas we just got Child of the Elder Blood. So let's save just in case, just in case things go horribly wrong here. But yeah, if we, we activate the Sunstone, where are you technically trying to direct us? It is up here. Okay. It is where this boat is. So what we did previously was we went up 
to might have even been the grotto or Rogni over here. Might have been this. And then walked up this pathway. Yeah, we were around here by this scattered treasure. And then we had to go back up around here. This is very mountainous. This is like extremely mountainous up here. And then this is also quite mountainous. But with some careful trekking, we were able to get over that mountain. And then there's this little sort of like valley in the middle where there was a cave entrance. And that was just like probably right here-ish. And we started poking our head in there, ran into some really strong wild hunt-like looking ghosts that were high level. And fought a few of them, but then decided to double back. And that is, in theory, where once we go in in full to that location, we'll pick out these question marks. So we could try to go back in that way. But I think what we do here is we try to behave. We try to do it the quote unquote right way. You know, don't deliberately try to break the game, especially not for what is going to be a really important quest. I think that is, you know, perhaps intriguing. Try something like that, but at the same time, it's just, it's one thing for a tiny little minor side quest where we might just be curious, but uh, for a main quest in which there's potentially a whole lot at stake, I think that's just not the kind of thing you want to be risking that you'll mess up the quest significantly by doing things in the wrong order. So for that reason, we'll actually access it via boat. 